Rewind. Rain delayed the start of the first chase race at Chicagoland Speedway, but when it got going, teammates Joey Logano and Brad Kozlowski were in the front row, bringing the field to green. Logano led the first 31 laps of the race until the competition caution. That flag came out squeezing the field for the restart. And from there, Logano would not lead another lap in this race. Pick it up on lap 76, and race leader Jimmy Johnson goes into the pits, and then the NASCAR inspector waves to get Chad Knauss' attention on the right rear tire. And then when the crew goes to check it out, nothing is amiss. Uh, that delay cost Jimmy five positions on the track and the lead. Knauss and JJ not too happy about that error. Lap 108 now, Cole Witt signals the coming of the rain by spinning out in turn four and then the raindrops start to fall after a five hour rain delay that caused the red flag to come out so the race resumes with matt kenseth getting the best of jimmy johnson on the restart chase contender joey logano sees smoke coming out of his engine on lap 148 he lost a cylinder in the engine and got back on the track but it would only hold until lap 177 when he lost the engine for good and a hail of smoke and oil the most spectacular blown engine belonged to Cole Witts on the night as his car blows up in amazing fashion. On the subsequent restart, Matt Kenseth finds a way to squeeze past race leader Kyle Busch, and Kenseth holds on to the lead for the final 32 laps. He wins the first race of this year's chase and sets himself up well for a strong championship run. And with that, folks, the checkered flag on today's program. I would like to thank you for joining us here on Toyota's Race Week, powered by the Sporting News, as we bring you coverage from your perspective, the fans. For the entire Over the Wall crew, I'm Zach Klein. Thanks for joining us, and have a great week, everybody. Real Local, WGSR 47.1, in high definition. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Word from the Lord. James Olfer here with you. This is the tent TV edition of, of a, a Word from the Lord. We are in the middle of our uh, tent meeting in uh, the Eden area up next to the Eden Mall and we want you to come out and be with us every night if you can. We hope that you will take advantage of it. It is uh, free uh, for the coming. We never take up any collections. We always ask for questions and, and you'll always have an opportunity to, to examine what the Bible is saying and we're going to be talking about that tonight a little bit about the need for such, a, such an event. So I hope you'll come out. Write this down. Uh, we're not quite halfway through it. And we'll be going till next Friday. Actually, I guess we have another week. And so uh, uh, come on out. We're actually going to be having some uh, preachers come up from uh, South Carolina uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. Next week, they'll be doing all the preaching. And so we hope that you'll come out and, and examine the truth. And, you know, friends, here's what will happen. You'll find that different people from different parts of the country will always speak the same thing if we come into the unity of the Spirit. And, uh, and that, that's what we're looking for. The unity of the Spirit found in the, in the Word of God will bring the unity that Christ desired. And so I want you to recognize the fact that all these denominational preachers, all these denominational factions that are in our community are actually going contrary to what the Bible says. But if we can come together, we can all speak the same thing, we can mind the same things, we can be of the same judgment, 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. So that's really what we're, what we're all about. I want to put our content information up so that you can uh, know how to reach me in the event that, that you, you want to uh, 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 get a hold of me. Uh, my phone number is 276-340-2653. Uh, I'm very blurry there. Uh, we meet at 250 Boulevard in, there in Eden, and uh, my email uh, address is a word from the Lord at gmail.com. So anytime you want to get a hold of me, this is how you can do that. And I'll be glad to talk to you or have a Bible study with you. Come out to your home and, and examine the Bible with you uh, on your, at your convenience. Uh, we'll come into your house and we'll sit down at the table across from you and you ask a Bible question and we'll give you the Bible answer. We'll study it out and see 
where it is that we, we differ and see if we can't come to an agreement like God wants us to do. And so this is how you can reach me. The, the information for the brethren in, in uh, Martinsville, 823 Starling Avenue, 120 American Legion in Danville, that's how you can uh, uh, meet with the uh, brethren there and the saints that are, that are there. And we hope that you will take advantage of that as well. Uh, of course, on Tuesday nights, we have uh, a word, uh, what does the Bible say, coming out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And uh, that is, can be seen on WHIGTV.com, Tuesday nights at 9. So please do that. Friends, one of the things that uh, I thought was very interesting that we uh, have come across of late, and it really has to do with uh, our tent meeting. We go out and we door knock and we uh, invite people to come out to the tent. We ask them for Bible studies. We try to uh, uh, engage them in, in some questions or just conversation uh, there at their door as we, as we meet them or on the street as we meet them. And one of the things that we often do too is we are handed flyers or we get flyers or uh, maybe we find uh, uh, flyers on the street or maybe they're put on our cars, different ways they, they come to us. Uh, sometimes they, they come in the mail or a member of, of the Lord's Church will bring one in and say, you know what, this is what was given to me just the other day. And, and they're very interesting. One of the things that, that uh, I noticed was uh, that the, the flyers that we have been coming across, either come in contact with something or another, uh, are very interesting. There's, here's a youth rally uh, that's being hosted by the Victory Baptist Church. Here's another one. Uh, it's an it's a old-fashioned homecoming, old-fashioned homecoming revival uh, by the Pleasant View uh, Baptist Church. And then here's, a, here's one, a, a charity Baptist church, old-fashioned tent revival. Everybody's old-fashioned tent revival. Friends, you know what? The, the gospel that we preach, the church that we're members of, was old-fashioned before the old-fashioned was cool. Everybody wants to be old-fashioned. Friends, it doesn't get any more old-fashioned if you want to hear the plain old Jerusalem gospel, like they used to say, than the tent that you'll find next to the Eden Mall. Now, I find it very interesting that, that uh, all of this is going on uh, during our tent meeting, during our, uh, uh, the time when we put ours up. I don't know if that's just a coincidence. As Yogi Berra would say, it seems too coincidental to be coincidental. Maybe people are trying to keep people from coming out to hear the gospel that, that uh, can save their souls. But here's one thing I do know. I know this, that of all the revivals and all the tent meetings and all the youth rallies and all the extracurricular activities that these uh, churches of men engage in, there's one thing, there's one thing that you won't find in all of these, and that is being able to ask a question. Being able to say, I have a question about something you said. I wonder if you would explain something that you said. Could you please explain to me what the Bible means or can you explain to me why you said this or why you believe that? You won't be able to do it here. And I know of, of whence I speak because, friends, we have asked these people. And when you go to these places, as a matter of fact, if you're a stranger, you've never been to these places and you ask a question, you're going to be suspect. You're going to be scrutinized. You're going to be looked crossways at because you are a troublemaker. Anybody who asks questions are troublemakers to these people. How do I know? Well, here's a case in point. This man, uh, uh, Gary Grubbs, called me Sunday night after uh, flyers for our tent were, were put on their cars at their, at their meeting assembly. And he calls me up and says he didn't want any part of this ministry and a very irate, very uh, uh, belligerent, uh, uh, rude. And I said, well, you can come to our tent and ask questions. You know, we, we don't have a problem with, with uh, inviting people to come to ours, and we're glad if someone comes to ours. And I asked him, I said, and why is it that this past summer, and I, we talked about this on, our, on what does the Bible say on our regular show, I said, why is it this past summer that one of our members came to your tent and you met them outside the tent and told them that if they were here to ask questions, it wasn't any use in them coming? Now, friends, what would make a preacher, what would make a pastor, what would make a man of God, what would make him seek out someone who's coming in and say, you know what, if you're here to ask questions, you don't need to stay. 
What would make someone be so afraid of questioning? What would make someone be so afraid of, of, asking, of someone asking a Bible question of them? After all, if you are preaching the Bible, you're teaching the Bible, and I know that he's one of the, the speakers on, on their uh, 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 so-called old-fashioned tent revival, uh, why, is it that, why is it that you would be afraid of someone asking you a question? It really makes me wonder if, if there's something to hide. Now, friends, I want you to consider these places won't give you a Bible, question, a Bible answer to a Bible question, but this place will. This is the only tent. This is the only gospel meeting. This is the only revival, if you will. This is the only place where you can come and ask a question, and you will be treated as an honored guest for doing so. Now, friends, I want you to, I want to kind of lay some groundwork, if you will. I want, you to, I want to lay some groundwork for uh, what we're going to do tonight or what we've been doing for the past uh, uh, many years. Friends, this, I don't know if you recognize this, this is the fifth time that the tent uh, has been set up next to the Eden Mall. The fifth time that this tent, or not this tent, the first time it was, it was Johnny's tent, but this is the fourth time this tent has been put up there. Fifth time a tent has been put up next to the Eden Mall and given opportunity for the people, excuse me, in Rockingham County, and uh, uh, the surrounding heirs to come out and, and, and hear the truth. So why is it that people are so afraid of someone coming out and asking a question? Why is it that people are so scared of someone coming in and examining what they're teaching? Do you treat a child who's asking you a question, are you so rude and, and uh, hateful to them for asking you a question? I would hope not. I would think that if your if your child's teacher mistreated your child because your child was asking a question, I would think that you would have a word or two to say to that teacher. That you'd say, "Wait a minute, our child's trying to learn, and you're treating them like a like a villain for asking a question. Why is it that you're doing that?" And so, why is it that preachers, local preachers, pastors, bishops, rabbis, whatever, are so afraid of? coming out and letting their, their doctrine be examined or coming out and examining what we're teaching. See, friends, it's not just that we're trying to uh, ask people questions about what they believe. We're actually opening up the phone lines every week. We're actually opening up the, the floor at our tent meetings uh, for, uh, for two weeks for people to ask a question about what we believe. We're glad to give an answer. Now, why is it that people are so afraid of that. You know what, friends? We've been asking this same question for a number of years. We've actually been trying to demonstrate that we want uh, uh, preachers to come out and, and ask a question or be in, engaged in some uh, 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 back and forth discussion for a number of years, and yet it really has not happened except on very rare occasions. I think one preacher came out to a tent meeting in Danville uh, other than that, I don't really know that any other preachers have really come and asked a question. There were some uh, uh, Mormon youngers, elders, not really elders according to the Bible, but they call themselves elders, came to the uh, tent meeting in Danville. They came and asked questions. We've had a number of individuals come out and ask questions, but no preachers will engage in it. They don't want to be asked questions, and they don't want to question anybody. Now, what is up with that? Why is that? What, what is there to be so afraid of? But just to show you how long this has been going on, I think this is uh, 2001. 2001 is when this uh, phone call was made and uh, we were in engaging in a, in a tent meeting and we were putting it on and we were saying the same things. We're trying to get people to come out and this is what a caller says about the local preachers. All right, just listen to what, what he says. What's the mouth saying? Uh, yes, I was just kind of wondering if there's going to be a, a video made of this tent meeting. We'll be, uh, we'll be filming every night, and we'll probably run some of it uh, on our regular, uh, what does the Bible say, hours. Uh, maybe even some special programs if we can uh, get the airtime and so forth. Well, I was... I guess I was kind of wondering uh, what, uh, I, I wonder if, if, if people would feel 
as free to discuss with you if there be a video. Oh, I see. Well, hello, you know what does Bob say? Uh, yes, sir. I'm just wondering, is, could I ask a question? Uh, you know, I didn't think that I, I've heard you a couple times before, and I'm, uh, uh, you're the only person local that I would listen to on television. Not to brag on you much, but I'm just saying you really do express yourself the correct way, I think, in my opinion. And I will be at y'all's tent service, that's for sure. Great, great. It. And we hope that, do you think this would be beneficial to hear uh, dialogue, say, between some preachers and uh, on these things we differ? Not going to happen. You think it's not going to happen? You're not going to have. You're not going to have any preachers around here, prominent preachers around here, that's going to come in there and debate you because you are accurate. You know what you're talking about. You can base it on the words in the Bible. A lot of the preachers around here are country, just country preachers, not to knock at anybody at all. It's just they go by what they've been taught all their lives, which is incorrect. Uh, a great deal of the churches around here are just um, kind of holy rollers, and that's great. That, that makes you feel good sometimes to a, to a point, but uh, the accuracy of the Bible, it's not there. Well, I hope his, his uh, what would you call that, prognostication doesn't come yeah, true, that, that, that a lot of them don't show up, because we visited, say, today with a gentleman that's right next door to us, just for that purpose, personal invitation, you know, we said we, we know we differ, come on right. out and let's discuss some of these things about which we differ, and uh, uh, you, you, probably, you may be right, but I hope that uh, we have a change just this once. Well, I hope it does too, because I will be there. All right. All right. Now, he he said he said he was going to be there. Now, friends, I'm just I'm saying I'm trying to lay out the groundwork that we have been asking for this, we have been offering this, we have been trying to uh, extend this invitation for uh, well over ten years. And why is it that people are so, have this uh, this uh, uh, um, I don't know, aversion, well, a fear of being, of being questioned. I don't know what kind of phobia that is, but it seems kind of strange to me that a teacher, someone who, put the, who would put themselves up in a position of being a teacher, an instructor, a, a pastor, a preacher, that they would be afraid of someone asking questions. I, I just don't understand that. What, what, is the, what, what is the problem that's going on here? So this was back in 2001 or, or 2002, and... Uh, just to show you that we have asked preachers. Here's another example. This is, uh, let's see, this is, I can't remember uh, his first name, but this is Mr. Milner. They actually, uh, his church used to uh, assemble in the old stone funeral home right next door at 823 Starting Avenue. They, they were assembling at 825 Starting Avenue, I think is the address there. And uh, so one day after services, we went in and, this was the, the invitation. I want you to notice just how, how rowdy and rough and how hateful we were to them when we were asking this. Okay? Just, just, just pay attention and listen. Yes, sir. Can I make an announcement to everyone of, of, yes, uh, uh, of the invitation? Yes, sir. Johnny, Johnny Robertson. Robertson. Um, we're, we're having a tent meeting in, uh, on the 16th, which will be next Monday. And uh, one of the things, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to have this kids meeting to talk about things that we differ about. Acts 15, 2, when Paul and Barnabas had dissensions, they didn't divide up into different groups they talked about. Can y'all turn that so up so I can hear it? Every night, we're going to invite everybody to come, and we're going to, we're going to have a lesson about things we differ on, and then we're going to open the floor, and if Mr. Miller wants to come and, and uh, he wants to speak up about something that he knows that I disagree with him or we disagree about each other, we're going to give the floor. We disagree. And, and, the, uh, and the word is going to come out. I don't know. I don't know. If we do, we're going to let the word end up being the way they do it. And, 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 and so what we want to do is we want to invite you to uh, to come to the tent meeting. It starts at 7 o'clock on, on uh, September the 16th. That's down at Fontaine in 220. You'll see that big tent going up in about uh, this week on Friday. So we just want to come and give that word of invitation. Okay. All right. All right, now, did you, did you see that? We went in. It was after their services. At the very end, asked if we could speak, gave the floor. We were given the floor. The invitation was extended. Everybody was fine, happy, cordial, no disruptions. Contrary to what you may be hearing, friends, we're actually, we're actually pretty nice people. We're just simply really honestly, truthfully, trying to examine why it is that we're all believing 
something different. We're all teaching something different, but we all try to follow the same Bible. We all claim to follow the same Bible. What, what's, what's the problem there? What's, what's the hang-up? Listen, why would you be afraid of being uh, 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 in, a, in a situation to where you could be taught the truth? Why would you be afraid of that? I want to consider this. In Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 15 and verse uh, 1, the, the apostle Paul and Barnabas were involved in a, a discussion that was a lot more uh, heated, if you will, than what we're uh, uh, talking about. In Acts 15 verse 1, the Bible says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas uh, had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem uh, unto the apostles uh, and elders about this question. Okay, so they get up there uh, and they and they being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia, Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come uh, to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done unto them. There rose up a certain uh, of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter, and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that how a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and, uh, and believe. So in Acts 15, there was some, some discussion going on, some disputation going on, if you will, and yet it was discussing things concerning salvation. Now, why can't we have that today? Why can't we have that discussion? Okay. You're on the word from the Lord. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes. Um, I have a question. Okay. Uh, we had a discussion, uh, a, a few friends and I, uh, talking about the tribulation. Um, is it so, you know, when the tribute, like when the rapture comes, isn't it so that um, the, the chosen one, you know, the believers, we will go, and then then the tribulations will come, you know, with with revelations and all that. that so, it, like, if you're a true believer, will you be here when all that other is going on, you know, with the mark of the beast and all that? Okay. That's a good question. Uh and the simple answer is all of that that you just asked about is not even in the Bible as far as what is commonly taught. In other words, the tribulation, the tribulation that, uh, that supposedly is going to come, I want you to notice this. In Acts chapter, Acts chapter 14 and verse 22, uh -huh. the Bible says that Paul went about confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorted them to continue in the faith and that we through much tribulation enter in, we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So the tribulation was already there in the Why? first century when the kingdom was being, was being uh, uh, preached and, and when the kingdom had just been started. And so there's not going to be a period of tribulation uh, like seven years or whatever that, that the, the righteous or the uh, unrighteous are going to go through. That tribulation is already here, number one. Number two... The rapture that is commonly talked about, whereas the, which, which says the righteous will, will be caught up and, you know, then people will be left behind and, you know, this car is going to be unmanned and that sort of thing. Uh, okay. that, that's, that's not in the Bible either. The Bible says that when the righteous are caught up, let's look at this, in 2 Thessalonians 4, and verse, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Thessalonians 4, and we're going to start about verse 16 here. Uh, now let's back up to verse uh, 13 here. 
He says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, all right, those that are dead. He says that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So he's trying to give them some explanation, some, some instruction that will, that will give them some hope. He said, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? Mm -hmm. I do. All right. Even so, them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, when is this going to happen? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now, that word prevent, that's an old English word. It doesn't mean to stop. It actually means to go before, to vent before, to prevent. So Paul is saying, we which are alive, we will not go before them which are dead. He's going to explain that. He says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the living people are not going to go ahead of, of the dead people, the ones who died in Christ, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive will be caught up. All right, verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So as far as the rapture goes, the Bible does talk about it being caught up, but it's not a caught up, where some are going to be left behind and some are going to stay and go through a period of tribulation. When Christ comes back, according to what Paul wrote here in 1 Thessalonians 4, that when Christ comes back, the dead in Christ will be raised and then the righteous who are alive, they'll be caught up into the air. And notice he says, we will be caught up into the clouds to meet, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So once the Lord comes back, he's not coming back to this earth. He's going to call his righteous, and he's going to take them back to heaven, and then it's all going to be over with. So okay. does that, it's almost like everything that most people believe about the rapture and the tribulation and so forth, it's kind of just backwards about what the Bible really says. Right. Okay. Well, well you've cleared that up, and uh, I pretty much had that same understanding but you, you cleared it up there was a lot of little things that I didn't quite get but uh, yeah yeah okay. I, I, I totally understand that okay and I, I I appreciate you answering my question okay you're welcome thank you for the call very good call now see friends see how see how beautiful it is when someone calls and asks a question and we get to go to the Bible and we say you know what Th this is how it all harmonizes you know there's not going to be uh, several resurrections, you know, the righteous aren't going to be raised up and then seven years later or a thousand years later or, you know, five days later or whatever, some other righteous are going to be raised up. Jesus said that in, uh, when, the, uh, when, the, when the resurrection comes, there's only going to be one resurrection. He says, marvel not at this. This is John 5 in verse 28. He says, marvel not at this for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they which have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Now someone says, well, see, there's two resurrections there. No, there's one resurrection. It's just that there's two groups of people being talked about. And the righteous will be raised out on that resurrection day unto life and the wicked will be raised into damnation. So they're going to go to their, to their uh, place of punishment. So one resurrection. Now, premillennialism, which says this thousand year reign, uh, it, it can't get around the fact that there's only one resurrection. They, they have to have several resurrections to get all the righteous here and the, and the wicked remaining, and then we have to have another resurrection and so forth. No, it's not in the Bible. So my, my point is, good call, good, good call, good question, and just shows what we can do if we will just be willing to ask a question or even be willing to answer the question. So... So my point is, when we're talking about these, uh, uh, these preachers, why won't they come out and, and, and be uh, allowed to ask them to be asked a question? You know, and, and it's not that you have to come to our tent to be asked that question, but we've been to other places. We've been to your tents, and we're trying to get you to say, you know what, let's, let's have some dialogue back and forth. But you know what? They just don't want to seem to 
to want that either. Here is uh, one of the local rock stars, uh, Dwayne King over at Piedmont uh, Baptist Church, and he and his fighting buddy Phil Kidd. This is what the invitation that we've given. And now this is the invitation Johnny's making to Dwayne King. I went to talk to Phil Kidd. Uh, I believe on the same. This may be the same tent meeting. And, uh, you know, both of them put it off on the other one, uh, it seems like. And, uh, but neither one has, has been willing to, be, to uh, be asked a question. But, again, we're just going and extending the invitation. Let's listen. In it. That's him. him. Johnny Robertson. Glad to meet you, Johnny. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I good. wondered good. when I was ever going to get to talk to you in person. Well, uh, here I am. Here I am. Well, I'm wondering if we might be able to ever get together. Maybe one of these days we will. Well, I hear a lot of your takes. You know Barbara Shrewsbury by any chance? I sure do. I used to work him up up there where she works. He oh, married really? to a daughter or something. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Yep. What's your name? Jamie Dawes. Jamie Dawes. Uh, are you uh, kin to any of the Dawses up that way? No, sir. See the Baptist out there puffing on her cigarettes, by the way. There's a preacher I know named, named Dawes. So, uh, She's okay. I was wondering, Dwayne, yes, I hear your tapes all the time, how you yes, give me a rough right. way to go. Yeah, why not I us, a hard time, though. Why not us get together and uh, have that, have that sit down? I do that. I do that. On, on television. Or at our TV. I don't so. Well, the thing about it is running me down behind my back is kind of, doesn't that kind of get old? It's probably about as old as you getting on TV and calling my name. You know what, though? No, I'm always offering you a chance to come on on TV and defend Baptist doctrine. Now, isn't, that, isn't, isn't there a difference between that? You won't think there's a difference talking time somebody's back and somebody getting up and saying, hey, I'd let Dwayne King sit down here and let's have a nice discussion. Because you, yeah. really, you really talk rough about me when you're, uh, when you're at your house, at your, at your place of work. Yeah. You just have to forgive me, I guess. Well, what I'd rather do, Wait for me to what I'd that. rather do is let's solve this problem by sitting down and, and being men and talking it over. Wait for me to do better. Maybe I'll help you. Okay. Yeah, what about us having a... Well, these days we'll do that. Okay. okay. We'll do that. You know, one of the things we're doing in our team is uh, we have a microphone that will run from the front to the back. Uh -huh. Any denominational preacher had a Pentecostal preacher there last night. Any denominational preacher that comes in, we know we're saying something that is contrary to what they believe. So we want to do the courteous thing. Well, that's good. Give them a microphone and let them stand up for their doctrine. You know, because that's, we got these disagreements. We're not going to work them out. And a doctrine that won't stand the test of scrutiny weak doctrine or something like that. We just preach Bible doctrine. That's all we got. Well, my name's not in the Bible. Is it? You're preaching. Hey. 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 Well, him hauled around, and, you know, he's not going to talk. He's not going to talk. We've asked him, Phil Kidd, to be out. No, I'm not going to talk. Uh, Johnny and uh, another man went over to Phil Kidd's, uh, excuse me, uh, Dwayne King's church and got threatened, you know, just want to have some dialogue, ask questions. And friends, my, my point is, what is the problem with asking questions? Why is it that, that asking questions brings so much animosity or hatred why is it that people have, have uh, uh, so much problem with uh, simply having some dialogue? Notice this. In Acts chapter, Acts chapter 17, Acts chapter 17, in verse 17, truth, those who speak the truth, would love the opportunity to ask a question. They would love the opportunity to give an explanation about what they believe. They would love to have the opportunity to say, hey, this is, this is what I believe, this is what you need to do to be saved, or so forth. You would, you would think, you would think that would be the case. In Acts 17, the Bible says that Paul, that, the, that Paul's spirit uh, was stirred in him, and so he began to, to have discussions in the marketplace. And therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain of the philosophers of the Epicureans, and of the, sorry about that.
uh, and the Stoics encountered him, and some said, what will this Babylon say? And some say, other some, he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preacheth unto them Jesus and the resurrection, uh, Jesus and the resurrection, verse 19. Uh, and they took him and brought him into the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. So they're asking him, you know what, we want to hear about this doctrine. We want to hear what you're teaching. We want to hear what you believe. Now, if you ask that of a, of a, of a preacher, a local preacher, they don't want to tell you what they believe. They, well, you know, if you don't believe like we believe, then you, we're not going to have any discussions with you. Friends, is that really, is that really uh, uh, what it's all about? Why would these guys not relish the opportunity to come on TV and tell a larger audience than what they would have under their tent? Why wouldn't they relish the opportunity to talk to a larger audience than what they would have just on their, uh, in their Sunday morning services or Wednesday night services? Why wouldn't they love the opportunity to come talk to a, a, an, a, 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 an audience that may not believe what they believe? If what they have is the truth, shouldn't it be the case that they want to get it out? I thought the Great Commission was to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, if they have the gospel, why wouldn't you do that? See, friends, the opportunities are endless. Why is it that they don't want to do that? Paul looked for the opportunity. He relished the opportunity. And as a matter of fact, they actually took him. He was willing to be taken somewhere in order to preach or teach to a larger audience. You would think that these preachers would, would want the same thing. And so, it's, um, I don't know, it's just kind of a, a puzzling to me that they, uh, uh, that they wouldn't do this, that they wouldn't do this. Now, here's something else I want you to notice about having a discussion. You actually get to answer some things, some misconceptions that people might have about you or what they may think about you. Maybe they've heard something about you and you can say, you know what, that's really not true. That's really not true. I know I've talked to uh, folks of the, uh, in, in, from the Jehovah's Witness and, and folks from in the, in the Mormon church, and when you bring up some things that, that, uh, that they believe or that is commonly held they believe, you know, they're quick to set you. No, that's not what we believe. We don't believe that or we don't hold that. Now, whether they do or not, you know, that's what you can discuss. Discuss, but you would think that, you would think that people would be uh, glad for the opportunity to set some misconceptions straight. For example, look at this. In Acts chapter uh, 24, in Acts chapter 24, and I'm going to, uh, we're going to look at verse 10 here. Acts 24 and verse 10. Uh, Acts 24, verse 10. Then Paul, after the governor had beckoned with him to speak, answered, For as much as I know that thou hast been uh, many years a judge unto this nation, I do more cheerfully answer for myself. Because, because that thou mayest understand that there are yet twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city, Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers. So Paul says, look, the things that they're accusing me of, I didn't do it. I'm not doing it. Not involved in it. They're just making this up. Now, friends, wouldn't you love that opportunity to set the record straight? Now, that's what we're, we're trying to offer the people. We're trying to offer these preachers, the pastors, the bishops, the rabbis, the opportunity to set the record straight. What is it that you really believe? What is it that, that, you're, really, that you're really doing? Now, you know what? If you've heard some things about, about the Church of Christ, the tent is a great opportunity for you to come out and examine if what you've been hearing is, in fact, the truth or not. I mean, we, we're accused of a whole lot of things, and you can come and, and see for yourself. I mean, you're, we're, we're, uh, we're accused of just being hateful people. Friends, you won't find a more uh, uh, caring, compassionate, friendly group of people than you'll find in the churches of Christ. That's, that's the truth. 
You come out to the tent, you will, you will be treated like a friend. You'll be treated warmly. You won't be treated uh, circumspectly. You won't be looking at crossways and say, well, I wonder if they're here to make trouble. Now, that's the way we're treated. I don't know why. You know, we're accused of, of causing riots and disturbing the peace. No, friends, we're not. But yet, people have this misconception that we're mean, we're hateful, we're bigots, we're homophobes. Is, is that really what we're all about? Do we really hate homosexuals? Do we really hate people in, in denominations? No. We hate sin. We hate things that are contrary to the truth. But we don't hate the people. We want to help the people. And so that's, that's what I'm saying. The tent is a great opportunity for you to come out and, and, and see if these things are so. Find out if, if what you're hearing is indeed, in, indeed uh, uh, the truth. You know, we're told that, uh, that we don't preach the gospel, that we preach a different gospel. Well, won't you come out and find out if the gospel that we're preaching is contrary to the Bible or not? Why don't you just come out and examine? Why don't you come out and see if, if we're here to make merchandise? Friends, that's one thing you'll find too. You can examine us and find out, you know what, we're not here. We're not doing all this for money. We're not doing all this to, to line our pockets. We're not doing all this to feather our nests. We're not doing all this to take your money, your hard-earned money, and, and, and live off, off your backs. That's what all the denominations do. They pass the old chicken bucket and they pass the plate several times. We're not here doing that. You'll never one time see the, the collection plate passed at the tent that we put up. All 12 days, you'll never see it. You'll never see it. Why? Because the members of the Church of Christ lay by and store up on the first day of the week as we've been commanded, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. And even then, if you assemble with us, you'll know very clearly we do not expect you to give. We do not want you to give. This is simply a command that's for the members of the church. We're just glad you're here. Now, is that that hard? And if you'll examine it, you'll, you may find that a lot of things that have been said about us really aren't true. For example, what about, what about this business that we're a cult? Friends, have you ever stopped to think, who is really cultish? Who, who is really more cultish? The Church of Christ or some of these denominations? Think about it. A cult does not let you question what they teach. They, they, you don't question the leaders. You don't question the, 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 the teacher. You don't question the, the head man in charge or head woman in charge. Whatever. You don't question them. Now, in the Church of Christ, you can question us. And we open the door. We say, hey, you know, would you like to question somebody? Do you have a question? We'll give you a microphone. Do you have a question? Is there anybody here that has a question? Now, is that really cultish? Cultish would be the person that says, well, let's just see. A cultish person would be the one that says, uh, we're not going to have you here. You're not going to be preaching here. You need, to, you need to leave even though we were invited. We just came to ask a question. See, friends, you may, you may find that really some of the things that have been said about us are really not true. Here's an example. Here's an example. Again, this is uh, probably 19, uh, this is probably 2001 or 2002. And on this particular instance, the tent was set up, uh, I believe it was on the corner of 220 in Martinsville, 220, and I think it's uh, uh, Frith. It's right there by the SunTrust Bank, right down from the, uh, the racetrack, the speedway. And the tent was set up there. It was, a, it was a rainy night, and this lady stops in, and, and she's standing in the doorway. She's listening to the sermon, and when the sermon is over, she asks a question. And everybody, everybody then, for some reason, I don't, know, I don't remember how it got blown up, but everybody starts talking about uh, how bad people we are. Well, this lady calls in, and she gives her defense, her answer about what really happened. I want you to listen to it. It's 2255, our number here on the program. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of different things at this point. You're on the air. Hey. Hello. I just thought I'd call and, and kind of look inform you why they're calling in about him not being a Christian. No. It was because I had called in earlier and said, 
that I wanted to thank him and and kind of tell people what happened to me. Uh, my father was in a was going to have to be operated on and have his leg removed. He's he's got sugar in his foot that dried it off. And uh, I had went to see my father at the hospital the night before his operation, which was the day before yesterday. And they had revival. Huh? On my way home, I saw this tent, this big tent. And I was taking my mom back home, and I was so worried about my father because he let that gangrene sit in his foot so long and hid it from us that he'd become very weak. He's old, and uh, I was very upset at the way he looked and thought maybe that he needed some prayer. And when I saw that tent, I had went back. I didn't know who it was. And when I went by it, I went in and listened to him preach, and I was standing out in the rain listening. And when he got done, uh, uh, he asked me who I was, and I spoke up and asked the people and him if they would pray for my father, and they did. And it's caused a lot of controversy since I called in. And some people said that he didn't believe in prayer. Uh, I can tell you right now, I don't go to church that much. But every one of those people prayed for my father. And what I said was the next morning before he was operated on, he and several other ones came to the, to the hospital, didn't know my father. There was one that did know my father. But there were a lot of people from that church that came and prayed for my father that didn't even know him. And I really appreciated that. And if the man didn't believe in prayer, I can tell you right now that I, they prayed in that church, I mean, in that tent, for my father and for other people. So I don't, I don't believe these people that are saying he don't believe in prayer really know what they're talking about. I mean, I'm not upset, and I don't, I'm not a church goer. I do believe in church. I do believe in God, but I, I, I don't believe in speaking things that I don't really know about, which I know for a fact that he was praying and his church was praying for my father and I I really appreciate a, a, a church they didn't just pray, they took action they came up to see my father so they can't be all that bad is what I'm saying and, and, and I've heard a lot of people say they didn't believe in healing well, if they don't believe in healing then what did they come and pray for and what did they pray for that night I think people have construed maybe something has said and turned it the way they want to out of anger. I don't know why. I, I think maybe that because he, I hear them saying he's putting other churches down, and that may be why they kind of want to throw off on him. I, I, I really, I listened to him while I was waiting to speak and ask for help. And he preached. And in that preaching, he made a comment about uh, somebody teaching things wrong, and he didn't complain about that. What I heard him say was their teachings was wrong according to what the Bible said, and he read something from the Bible and compared it to what uh, another, the way someone else was teaching. I, I think he's not personally throwing off on anybody from what I heard while I was waiting. I don't really know. I haven't been there enough to know. But I do know that what I heard him say was he was, some people preached not by the Bible. So I don't think, I think a lot of people are angry because it might be hitting home to them that, that maybe their preachers or whatever are not teaching from the Bible. They're teaching sort of the way we want to live. I mean, this day and time, everybody knows, and I know enough that I have read the Bible, that a lot of us do not live like God intended us to live. And But I do know if these people are Christians, they shouldn't be calling him on this man, throwing off on him, and, and then in turn saying he's throwing off on the other ones. Isn't that the same thing? Certainly sounds like it. I certainly appreciate your call. I want to see what Thank some other you. folks have to say. All right, so here's a lady that calls in, and she's actually, you know, setting the record straight on how, how she was treated. Now, friends, that's, that's the way you'll be treated. 
You'll be treated warmly, welcome, be, uh, uh, cordially. Everything that we have, the materials out there are free. So there's really no reason for you not to come investigate. I know many of you are watching, and a lot of you out there like what you hear. You like the Bible teaching. You like the preaching. You like the, uh, uh, the, the Bible answers. And you're the one to say, you know what, those folks know the Bible. You know what, friends? You're sitting over there on the sidelines, and you're not helping us help our society. If you will come out and, and let it be known, you know what, we support this then we can make a big difference together. And so come out, ask a question, bring your preacher, your pastor, your bishop, your rabbi, whoever it is, and, and say, you know what? There's no reason why we can't be friends, that we can't be known together, that we can't uh, uh, say, you know what? Hey, we're on the same team. So um, come on out to the tent. You won't, you won't be mistreated. You're on the word of the Lord. Yes. 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 Um I called in earlier about the tribulation. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, I'm not calling about that one this time, but uh, I do have an aunt. You know, I am a Christian, and uh, but I have an aunt, and she's a Christian, but her sister is a Jehovah, and she had talked to me the other a few weeks ago and said that she has been having kind of like a Bible study or whatever with with other Jehovah Witnesses, mm -hmm. and I'm a little bit concerned about that because, um, well, you know why I'm concerned about that. Uh, I just, I don't know how to approach her about that because I think she's getting her stuff mixed up. Um, right. I don't claim everything about the Bible. <clears throat> um, you know, I do watch your show, and, and I would love to come and, and visit y'all's church sometime. I, I, I think, I'll... I, I've watched uh, Johnny and you and and everything, and uh, you know I'm from North Carolina, but uh, I'm just a little bit concerned on that because I can't tell you how many people tell me, well, they have, we pretty much have the same beliefs, and no, we do not. I mean, right. I, I don't think we do. <laughs> well, I would say that's probably true with uh, the majority, or if not all, the denominations. You know, whether it be the Jehovah's Witness or not, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Pentecostals, Assembly of God, whatever. You know, everybody claims that, that well, we're close, but no, we're really not. And a lot of times we, we kind of we dogpile on the Jehovah's Witness, but in reality, all these other groups have their own divisions and their own disagreements on what the Bible really says. So that concerns me. As much as you're concerned about... Uh, your, your, who was it? Your, my aunt. Your aunt. As I, much as you're concerned about your aunt being, uh, having a Bible study with Jehovah's Witness, I'm concerned with everybody who's in these churches of men that you can't find the Bible, you know, and we're all, we all say we're going in the same direction, but we all believe something different. That, I'm concerned about everybody, uh, who's in that situation. So, uh, it's really kind of hard to give you an answer about what to do with that, other than I would say, why don't you and your mom and your aunt come out to the tent and let's study the Bible together and then, you know, then maybe we can uh, figure out a, 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 a avenue of, of, of attack on how to, how to uh, uh, maybe answer some of the Jehovah's Witness questions. I know we can do that. I know we can answer any question she has about the Jehovah's Witness. Uh, so uh, why don't y'all just come out to the tent and let's go from there. All right, so, well, thank you so much, sir. Okay. I, I know I didn't really help you answer your question there, but... No, that, no that's fine. Thank uh, you. Oh, uh, okay. So, you know, and, and sometimes questions are hard to diff difficult to answer in just a couple minutes. But what would, you, what would you do about a person who stayed with Jehovah's Witness? What I would do is I would take them to the Bible, find someone who knows how to answer Jehovah's Witness doctrine, doctrine and I'd say, hey, you know, let's put you in contact with this. If I knew someone who, who had cancer, I'd say, hey, you know what? Let's put you in contact with somebody who knows how to, how to get rid of it, how, how to over, how over, uh, overcome it or how to defeat it. So, but that's the same thing. So the tent is a good opportunity. If you have a Bible question, maybe this is a situation. Maybe you have a loved one who's studying the Bible with a, uh, someone in the, uh, the Latter-day Saints church. Or maybe you have someone who's studying the Bible with the Jehovah's Witness and you're concerned about it. Come out to the tent and say, hey, 
What about the Jehovah's Witness? Let's, you know, how do we answer this question? Uh, that's, that'd be a pretty good uh, uh, discussion right there. So, and like I said before, we've had some uh, uh, Mormons come out to the tent and ask questions. So, uh, you know, you might find the answer there firsthand. So, but friends, the way we treat people, the way we deal with people, it's, it's um, so unlike what you, uh, uh, what you might think. Again, this is a blast from the past. I want to show you this. Uh, this is a tent meeting. Uh, I think this may be the, act, the, the same tent meeting that the, the previous uh, clip was referring to. This is the same location, maybe not the same night, but the same location. And there's a, uh, a young lady here. She's actually from the Pentecostal church. And uh, she, she asked a question, and here's the answer. Apologize for the audio, because it's, it's very old clip. Well, So there was a, there was a question session under under our tent uh, many years ago, and just to show you, we you know the lady the young girl wasn't mistreated at all. We treated her very well and, and kindly, and so we want you to know you can do the same thing, friends. Uh, one last one last uh, Bible uh, passage I want you to consider is Acts chapter twenty eight. In Acts chapter twenty eight. And uh, we'll say verse 17. You have the Apostle Paul in prison at this time. And here's what took place when he was in prison. People came and said this. Acts, Acts uh, 28, 17. 20, 17. And it came to pass that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come, they said unto them, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed uh, nothing uh, against the people or customs of our Fathers, yet was I delivered 
prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. Verse 18. Who, when they had examined me, would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, and it constrained, and I was constrained to appeal to Caesar, not that I had ought any acute ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, I've called you, called for you to see you, to speak with you, because that of the hope of Israel I'm bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that sh that came showed or spake uh, any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning the sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Now, the church of Christ is spoken against. Everybody, you know, the atheist wants to despise us, wants to destroy us, wants to get us out of, out of, out of the world and so forth. That's fine. Why don't you come out and find out why that is? Why don't you come out and find why is it that people would, would want to uh, uh, do that or why they hate us so much, the church of Christ, why they hate us so much? Friends, it may be that you are afraid or you're ashamed. Maybe you're like this lady. You need to consider that the tent is the place you need to be. Listen to what this lady says. Not very long. Listen to what she says. Sure. I ask a question and then Ogre will, will give you an answer. Okay. But, uh, I noticed Go tonight you was speaking. You didn't go to your preacher to answer your question. No, because I'm ashamed. That well, but I'm, saying, but I'm saying we're not ashamed for you to ask us and we're not ashamed to give an answer. So, what do you think, Joe? You, Did you, you hear that? Down and... Did you hear that? You didn't go she to was ashamed, or afraid to ask her preacher. No, because I'm ashamed. That well, but I'm, saying, but I'm saying we're not ashamed for you to ask us and we're not ashamed to give an answer. So, what do you think? Now, if you, want, if you want a Bible answer to your Bible question, where you need to be is you need to be in the Eden, near, next to the Eden Mall in the tent. You know why, friends? Because that is where you get your Bible uh, questions answered. You don't have to, you don't, don't go to any other place. You know, a lot of tents going up, a lot of meetings going on, but you won't get an answer from this guy. I know that. You won't get an answer from Gary Grubbs or anybody else, Calvin Adams and, and Eden. You won't get it, but I'll tell you where you will get one. You'll get one right here next to the Eden Mall, September 16th through the 27th every night at 7 p.m. Come out to the tent. We hope to see you there. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Real Local, WGSR 47.1 in high definition.